Okay. Hey, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Bobby Smith, Gil President here. We're excited uh, for today's BNI uh, strategy session. And uh, obviously, we have the incredible Michelle Campbell, fresh off of her uh, Oscar winning performance at the Media Center. Uh, um, but, you know, before we get into this, and we really appreciate everybody here, we value your time. This is the beginning of something, right? And I want to bring Jonathan Bernasso on for a moment uh, to discuss something before Michelle gets into it. But very quickly, you know, a lot of what we look at, obviously, everything we do at Power is data driven, right? This is data driven. So we look at the math. And, and I know what the math is on this, right? The math says that the more people that we have in the amazing BNI organizations throughout the United States and one day throughout the world, that means the more uh, really great elite professionals, if you will, that you'll be connecting with on a regular basis. And that means that you are going to add more consultants to your business if you are effective and, it, and if you follow protocols and do the right thing, engagement strategies. And that means you will sell more solar. And that means we'll have a greater impact on the world. And everything we do is built around impact and income. If you are a leader in this company and you have an organization or a team, then again, it's math. You will earn more mentor income. You will earn more override income. You will have a larger team and you will have a greater impact on the world. Again, back to impact and income and mathematics. So we're very excited about this more formal launch of the BNI relationship with power, if you will, kicked off at the media center. So Mr. Bernasso and Jonathan Bernasso, I got to give him a lot of credit. We have a lot of fun. We're best friends. And we, we, we critique each other. Um, Jonathan, I have to give a lot of credit for this. You know, he, he pioneered this out in the field. There's a lot of reasons why Jonathan Bernasso is one of the top solar professionals in the United States of America and in power. And that's just because there's an old saying, what do you do? You do everything all the time. I don't know if I know a greater example of do everything all the time than Bernasso. Um, he certainly hits us up every <laughs> for everything all the time. Um, but if there's something that can be done in the world of solar, he does it. And he does it at the highest level, online, in line, and then culminating that with building houses for people that need shelter around the world that we're so excited to participate. So I don't know if anybody represents impact and income more than Jonathan. And again, just, just doing everything. So Jonathan, maybe you could take a moment because I really want to give Michelle the floor and talk strategy here. Just about what prompted you to join BNI, what your experience has been, share some of the mathematical data, and, and what your goal is here as a leader. I know this is a real estate play, and I know it's a real estate play for you. You have the ball. Absolutely. Thank you for the kind words, Bobby. I will pay you later for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. And Everybody uh, else gets paid. I think I should. Put me on your list. <laughs> Tequila's on the way. So... The only thing I'll add to, to your amazing words there is as vision holders and shareholders and getting stock options or those that did the WeFunder, the more people that are in BNI, the more successful power is, consultants are, the more we all do better, the more that this company will, will be publicly traded and have immense value and hopefully multi-country one day. So it's super exciting. Uh, BNI was introduced to me about... Three years ago, four years ago, I looked at it. I, I didn't make the commitment. A few months later, you know, the universe led me to a Chamber of Commerce event. And this gentleman, Murtaza, said, hey, you really got to visit my BNI chapter. We have 30 to 40 professionals. We meet once a week. It'll help your business. And uh, I shared this on Monday's Power Hour, but I told myself, I'll get up early every Wednesday, go in person or some are Zoom. I won't stay out late Tuesday. I'll public speak every week. I'll do a 10 minute presentation every quarter. I'll really work on my business and learn some things and meet some people. If I just sell one deal, it'll all be worth it. In my first year, I think it took me about four to six months to close my first deal. In my first year, I think I closed five or six deals. In my second year, I closed 13 deals. And just last week, I closed an 18 kilowatt from the UPS store that was in my BNI chapter, Lisa Smith, three years ago. So BNI is a forever lasting family and friends. It's beyond worth it. It's improved my public speaking, my networks, my spheres, my connections, my income, my impact, helping homeowners. Um, 
And I, I couldn't be more excited to introduce BNI to the field and to thousands of consultants that I know can benefit them as well. So that's the goal here, Bobby, today. Thank you, John. If I heard you correctly, in the power compensation model, you basically have a six-figure income from BNI. <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? Yes. Um, so with that, Charles, and maybe you and Jim will come on, you know, when she's done and we'll, we'll tie this up a bit. And again, this is the beginning. So again, you have a chance to get in this early. You have a chance to control this. You have a chance to control the real estate. So I want to give you Michelle Campbell, again, who uh, spoke at the uh, our, our Power Hour the other night and have her walk you through it. And then we'll open up the chat bar at the end for some questions uh, after we kill the, the recording, Charles, I believe, and we'll go from there. Michelle, you have the floor. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Michelle Campbell. I'm head of business development and strategic strategic alliances with BNI. I also own um, the BNI Alaska franchise. I do live in Michigan. Uh, we have two children and my husband is a, a teacher and a wrestling coach for high school. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be using him in a few examples later today. So if you do not have a pen and paper, um, you will probably want to grab one because you're actually we're going to do this kind of as a workshop in a few areas. I'm going to have you think and actually write stuff down. Um, I'm a huge note taker, so I have mine even next to me as well. I started off in BNI in October of 2000. So I'm coming up on almost 21 years with the company. Um, I was a member for about 18 of those years. I've been an executive director for 10 of them um, and then in this global role for about a year and a half. Um, and really my role is to have a huge impact on the organization. So I loved hearing that Charles's word was impact as well. And that was actually my word for my business planning. Um, so hopefully today the goal is to have a lot of impact on your business. Hopefully that's through BNI, but if it's not, I promise you'll learn at least something here that's gonna help you grow your power business even more. On Monday, you had heard a little bit about um, BNI, the fact that we're a global organization over 280,000 members around the world and over 10,000 um, or chapters worldwide. That being in, said, in the U.S., we have about 3,800 and some chapters around the U.S. Um, and we were founded back in 1985, actually, in California, not too far from where headquarters is there for you guys and gals. Um, just a few stats. Again, I shared these on Mondays, but or Mondays meeting. But basically, you heard Jonathan's statistics last year. For 12 months, the average BNI member received 30 referrals and closed over $56,000 in business. So those two stats alone, and, and you also heard from Jonathan's experience, the first year you might not get as much as you do the second, third, fourth, and so forth. And that held true for me too. So as a financial advisor, I didn't get my first good referral until nine months in to being in the chapter. And part of that is if you think about the price point of potentially the products that you use or how much trust somebody has to have with you, you know, to just order 500 business cards from the printer compared to, you know, buying a new solar system or, you know, hiring a financial advisor, there's lots of different trust level and different price points. So um, the one thing I will say any networking that you do, you can't just go to one event and be like, oh, this didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. You have to continue to go. So um, you'll see a few of those things as well. Today, I want to talk about the three E's of referrals. So if you want in the chat, if you want to take some guesses, and, and I did say these on Monday. So if you were really paying attention on Monday, you might catch these. But what do you think are the three E's of referrals. And what this means is the word starts with the letter E. So if you want to throw in the chat what you might think, we can have some guessing and see what you think here. Um, and I will still tell you them too, but with referrals, what are they? Exposure. Okay. That's a good one. Yep. Earns. Good one. Yep. Engage. Awesome. Good, good. Okay. So those are all excellent E words. What we know is with referrals, they are more effective, right? They are more efficient. So they convert at a higher rate. They also you know, save you more time than just cold calling or door to door or any of those kind of things. And the third E that we like to say is they're more enjoyable, right? So think about, would you rather reach out to a prospective client that is excited to hear from you because somebody else said how amazing you are 
or would you rather pick up the phone and, and do cold calling, right? Referrals are definitely more enjoyable. So effective, efficient, and enjoyable. And when we look at some of the statistics on referrals, we do know that peers do influence most buying decisions. So when you are referred to somebody because they've already worked with you, chances are good they're more likely to hire you. You're probably not gonna have as many objections to deal with. You're not gonna have um, as long of a sales cycle. You know, you won't have as many of the, oh, I need to think about it conversations, right? In addition to that, um, the value is usually higher. Usually they purchase more or they you're able to upsell a little bit more as well when it comes to referrals. Now, I know this is smaller print, you're not gonna read all these, but really, you know, 18 reasons why referrals are the best lead channel. Again, I've already mentioned a couple of those, but they're also usually low cost. So number 14 is low cost. Um, sometimes even low cost, but typically low cost for sure. And they really are, you know, one of the re reasons to remind your existing clients that you've already worked with that you're still in business, right? So that's also a great reason to reach out and call those folks. So can we all agree, before we go into this too much further, that you're here because you wanna grow your business, you would like to generate more income and have bigger impact, and you probably wanna be more effective and efficient. Does that sound good? Okay. Clients already expect you to do a good job when they hire you. I know I shouldn't have to tell you this, but um, a lot of people will say, oh, well, I do have a referral plan. I, I provide great customer service. Okay, that's not a plan, right? That's also that's an expectation your clients already have for you. So um, doing a good job and having your clients give you referrals, that's just kind of icing on the cake. But we're gonna talk about referrals in the standpoint today of building other professionals that can help provide you referrals, right? The, the golden geese versus just the golden egg. Um, Ultimately, we need those eggs too, because that's what really makes our money for us. But um, we really want to focus on the golden geese as well. Now, I mentioned this on Monday as well, but if you did not screenshot this or you have not written this down yourself, I would highly encourage you to make sure that you do so. And that is, are you doing the activities necessary to get the results you say you desire? So again, that's, are you getting the activities necessary or are you doing the activities necessary to get the results you say that you desire? That is something that, um, as I was a, a business coach, so if you're looking at leading a team, which I know several of you are, and building ambassadors, these are the things that you need to say to them sometimes, because it's there's times where you want it more for them than they want it for themselves, right? So you got to make sure that they're doing those activities. And there's a lot of different activities we can do, especially um, with making sure that there's stuff in our calendars each week to work on marketing and work on networking. Um, now, most of you have already gone to this website, um, but if you haven't, and I'll show this multiple times throughout the, the our meeting today, um, if you've not gone to bnipartner.com slash power, you're going to want to do that. That's one of the steps I would recommend that you take right away. Um, so that way you can find a local BNI chapter. And by now, most of our folks have, um, already followed up with you and you've been able to do chapters and so forth. So um, if you have not visited a chapter yet, you can definitely do that as well. Now let's talk about being selected. Again, we already talked about having a business in place, which all of you have. You do have to commit to a weekly meeting. And I know sometimes it's like, oh man, can I do this every week? I promise you can. When it is your most effective 90 minutes of the week, you can make it happen, right? Um, and then having the philosophy of giver's gain. So once you visit that web page, um, it's gonna take you to the site, the co-branded site, and you'll just simply put in first name, last name, email, phone, and what zip code you're looking for. A map will come up. You will be able to see all the different chapters that are available in your area. And then if you look at the drop down and change it to just solar, any chapters that already have a solar professional, those will go away. So it'll show you chapters that have openings. And I know that several of you have already done this. Once you pick a chapter or two that you want to visit, um, you simply can click on the, the visit this chapter up here or, you know, in the middle of the page. Um, and you can register to visit. It will tell you where they're meeting. So in this case, you can see on this example, they normally meet at 
Bubba Lou's barbecue. Um, but currently they're using BNI online, which is through the Zoom platform. So you can self serve right through that web page. You don't have to wait for our chapter placement team to follow up with you. Then I want to talk about what do you do once you, you know, basically you register, right? You visit a chapter and then you get to the point where you're deciding you want to actually apply for membership and lock out your competitors. Okay. So you're going to fill out the application. Now, typically these are done online. I screenshotted kind of our old version, but that it'll look, it'll look same, but slightly different. Um, you'll put in your business name. The key here is you need to make sure that you have power somewhere in your business name. Okay. So let's say that I was a consultant and I had, you know, Campbell Solar. I would want to have in there maybe Campbell Solar, a power company or a power consultant or something like that. Because if you don't put power in your business name, then when we do special trainings, like Jim and I had talked about, maybe having Ivan Meisner do a special training just for you guys and gals, you will not get the invite because I have no way of knowing that you're with power and not some other solar company, right? So make sure that's in your business name. The other thing I wanna point out is make sure that you're putting in your email address that you're actually going to check, okay? Because this is gonna be your login for all of our technology and all of, everything BNI related. So um, if I were to send uh, Steve a, a um, referral, it's gonna to go to whatever email he put in his BNI Connect application, okay? So you wanna make sure your email, if I send that, you know, I give you the referral to my next door neighbor, well, then you want to make sure the email that address that you put on this application is one you actually check because otherwise you'll miss out on some of those referrals. Um, the fees do vary. That um, the fees vary to region to region. Typically, it's going to be a thousand or less for your first year, just giving you a ballpark. Um, second year, you don't pay the application fee. What I will tell you, and I know cash flow again, me having come from the financial advisor role, um, cash flow can be an issue occasionally, but if you buy a two-year membership, it's usually about a 30% discount than if you were to buy a one-year membership and then again, renew another one year and so forth. So more upfront, but definitely less expensive overall. So I would encourage you to look at the two-year option if you have the financial means to do so. Now, let's talk about the other parts of the application. So a membership committee at that local chapter is going to actually review and decide, are you a good fit for their chapter, okay? So it's going to look a little bit like a job resume. They're gonna ask, what experience do you have in this field? How long have you been in this field? Now, let's say you just started with power a month ago. That's okay, put it in there. But here's my but with this. Make sure you add other elements of what you have done in the past, right? So let me give you an example. We had a gentleman, um, not from power, but from a, a different company, apply in one of the Las Vegas chapters. He had bought a um, Two Maids and a Mop franchise. Okay, so he bought a franchise. He had only had it for a month. He saw me present at one of their events, decided to go, decided to apply. The chapter turned him down. And we're like, he called me. He's like, they, they declined me. I was like, what? He had been a Las Vegas casino exec for 20 years. The man had amazing connections within Vegas. He just didn't put that down anywhere. So the chapter just declined him, not going any further. So this is, treat it like a job resume. Sell yourself, okay? Don't just answer the question and be done. Like if it's, a, like if it's two months, put what you did before that, okay? So hopefully that helps. Is the profession classification under which you're applying your primary application? Say yes. Okay, most of the time, right? Now, if it's really not, that's okay. You need to just tell them the difference too. But like, I know some of you, you might be transitioning from one other occupation, trying to build your power business more to be your full-time thing. Say that, okay? Um, usually the only time it's an issue is if it was conflicting. So for example, again, I live in Michigan. Uh, several years ago, we had a gentleman that applied to a chapter who was also a USPS mail carrier. And he was starting a snow plowing and landscaping business. The chapter declined him because he was still 
a mail carrier. So they're like, listen, if we give you referrals and one of our businesses has snow and you have to be out delivering the mail and you can't plow their drive, like that doesn't reflect good on us, right? So just be honest, but also if you need to do it, I mean, you guys and gals are in sales, sell yourself, right? Um, so that's something to keep in mind. There will be a couple questions. Um, are you willing and able to send a substitute if you're unable to attend a meeting? So that one of the key elements with BNI that makes BNI really different from other organization is we do have accountability. You have to be in attendance. If you're not in attendance, you can send a sub. Now, who can be a sub? Literally anybody who can talk and fog a mirror. I mean, that's like the baseline requirement. Now, that being said, it's your business. I would add a few of your own personal requirements to that as well. Um, for example, when we were meeting in person, especially, I had to have a sub a lot of different times. I would have never sent my sister, even though I love her to death, but my sister is always late. Like I would have had to tell her that the meeting started at 6 a.m. to even have a, a, a goal of a minimum chance of getting her there by seven, right? So um, I would have never sent my sister where a lot of times I would use some of my clients, um, which in your guys and gals case, I would do that too. Cause guess who can go into the chapter and talk about how amazing you are and how much money you've saved them and you know all those kind of things, right? Like let them tell that story too. The other one is, do you belong to other networking organizations? Um, you can belong to as many networking organizations as you would like, but with BNI, we only allow you to be part of one organization that allows only one person per profession. Okay, so what that means, you can't be in two different BNI chapters. Now, you could be in one BNI and somebody else on your team could be in another chapter, that's okay. But for you yourself, like you really have to just be in one. And part of that is you're building trust and you're building referrals and you're building, you know, those relationships. So the realtor in the chapter, or the handyman in the chapter might think, oh, well, if you're in two, who are you giving the referrals to? So instead of helping to eliminate competition, you'd actually be directly creating. So, um, but if you're involved in other networking organizations like Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, Kiwanis, so on and so forth, those are all good things to also have inside of there. You will need to agree to the code of ethics, which I feel most of you, um, when I look at even powers core values, like they fit right along with this. And then the application process, um, like I said, your, the membership committee will review your application um, and they'll let you know how it's going. Once they approve you, then you will make the payment. So that is a slight change from what used to be in the past. Um, you will need two business references. So don't put your mom, even though she might be a client, you know, put business references, right? Um, put people and let them know, hey, someone from our BNI chapter might be calling you. Now, the questions that they're typically going to ask is they might say, you know, I, you know, I'm calling because Jonathan put you down as a reference. I just would like to know how did you work with Jonathan? And they might say, and then, you know, would you ever be willing to refer him to any of your friends and family members? And that's pretty much the questions that they ask. Okay. Now, I would recommend if you haven't done so already, visit a chapter or two. Um, don't sell once you get to the chapter, okay? Your job that first couple of days is not to sell. You're there to build relationships. No, that being said, you might get a referral, you know? Um, and you can say, here's a great referral for me or here, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, you can say that stuff, right? But don't just come in there like, oh, I have to make a sale, right? There, there's a difference, people can tell that. Um, once you decide which chapter you're going to apply to, then turn in that application, and we've already talked about those. Now, here's a question for you, and please be honest, because this is probably different for all of you. Have you ever gone to a networking event, or have you ever not wanted to go to a networking event because you just don't enjoy them? You can raise your hand. Okay, so it happens, and part of that is there's something called the networking disconnect, and what that means is a lot of times... Um, and you might have, you've been, hopefully this wasn't you, but you may have been attacked by somebody like shoving a business card in your face, right? Um, I remember watching, at, I was at a chamber mixer and this one gentleman would actually go in and like, if three people were talking, he'd like interrupt and like hand out his business card, you know? I, I almost felt like his manager or whoever his sales team was, or, you know, president or whatever might be, like was hand out as many business cards as you can. And he like, took that as what he was supposed to do. Um, and here he was like interrupting conversations and you know we were all being attacked by his business card. Um, so don't do that. So the networking disconnect is a lot of times, you know, you're talking to people who probably may or may not wanna buy from you. 
And, you know, there's just that like clash in a way. So the key when you're building relationships is learning about them. Jim mentioned on Monday, the gains exchange. That's something that um, our founder and a lot of our members, we, we train them, you know, talk about each other's goals, talk about the interests, talk about your accomplishments your networks, your skills, right? Don't just talk about, hey, I have this amazing product as your first point of contact. Okay, so these next couple slides, if you want to screenshot these because you want to review them this weekend, I would encourage you to do so, or you can, you know, you have your phone handy, you can take a picture, whatever you would like to do. Um, but the first thing is when it comes to networking, well, when it comes to your business, hopefully you've already done this, but you have goals, set those goals, right? What besides the business, besides the income, what other elements of yourself or your community do you want to impact, right? Are there areas, skills you want to get better at? You heard Jonathan say he knew he was going to get better at public speaking. You know, think about those. What are some of the goals that you have? Um, then you need to know your numbers, okay? So knowing your numbers is really key, and I'll talk about that in a minute. When it comes to going to a networking event, how many of you have set goals? So you went to a chamber mixer and you've actually set a goal. Okay. Most people don't. Some people do. Hopefully you do. And hopefully from here on out, you will. So who do you want to meet when you get there? Right? Like if you knew you could meet. So for example, um, as a financial advisor for a while, I needed a good estate attorney that I could pass referrals to. Not necessarily that would give me referrals, although those, those would be great, but one that I could pass referrals to because I wanted to look really good to my clients. So when I would go to a chamber mixer, part of my goal was to find an estate attorney. So if I met somebody, I'd be like, hey, do you know any attorneys here? You know, after I met them, learned about them, do you know any attorneys here? And then they, that would happen, right? So set the goals. Um, and then know in your own mind, why are those goals important? And then the WIAFT is what's in it for them? So why would an estate attorney in that case want to meet me? Well, hello, I'm going to pass them referrals. <laughs> um, and then you want to have your in introduction. Okay, so making sure that you are setting those really clear, concise goals for yourself. Because then when you walk out of the room, you know if that was successful. Okay, um, not just, oh, I had great food there or whatever it might be, right? Like, was, was it successful? Okay. Um, and then have an emotionally based message, an emotionally charged message. So if you haven't really thought about why is it you're doing what you do, I would look at that. And I know on Monday, Jonathan saw, or shared a pretty good video um, from your guys and gals own CEO of why he founded Power in the first place. Like, obviously you can't just copy exactly what he said, but you can in some cases, actually, I don't know why my screen just did that. Um, you can look at your why are you doing that? So why did you join Power? Why did you decide to work with Power? What do you love about the organization? What do you love about the leadership? You know, what are those kind of things? So really think about your emotional based message and have that ready to go. Don't just say to somebody, I sell solar, right? Like that's not very fun um, to just be, you know, you can, you can add more to that, right? And then, like I said, you really need to know your numbers. Um, so knowing your numbers is key. And um, you heard, uh, Bobby talk about math. So I was kind of a math nerd for sure. Um, and that being said, I, I do know numbers pretty well. So thinking about all of these, you really need to make sure you know all these details. And if you're not a detail person, I get it, but you should know these for your business. So how much revenue does each client and transaction generate? Know that. Of course, there might be an average. You know, how many referrals do you need to get? How many hours are you working? What things do you need to change? When I first started as an advisor, I shared I did a lot of cold calling and I mean straight out cold calling, but I knew every, and this was back in 2000, 2001. So a lot of people actually still answered their phones. Um, there wasn't the smartphones with caller ID was starting, but not as in detail as what it is today. Um, I knew for every fifth person I called, they would answer. And I knew for every five people I actually talked to, one would book an appointment with me. And I knew for every 10 people that booked an appointment with me, only three would actually show up. The other seven would just never show up, right? Um, and I knew though that out of those three that sh showed up, at least one would become a client. And I knew on average, I made about $1,000 in commission at the time. So I played games with my, you know, like 
on my dial sheet. Like I didn't care. Every no just meant I was one step closer to a yes. Now, when I looked at referrals, right? Referrals, typically I only needed two or three referrals to get one client. So again, more effective, more efficient, but I still had to do the other activities because I didn't have enough clients to get referrals to and I was new and I didn't have enough, my network wasn't built then, right? Um, fortunately, towards the end of my financial planning career, like I was working 10, maybe 15 hours a week and making really good money, but it's because I would work 80 hours a week and did a ton of cold calling back in the day, right? So knowing your numbers is key because it also will always put you back into perspective of are you doing the activities necessary to get the results you say you desire, right? Um, so those are some homework things for you to do this weekend if you don't already know these things. And you'll want to know difference too. Like what are the, you know, from social media, what do I have to do? LinkedIn, what do I have to do? Um, if it's going to be BNI, BNI, what do I have to do, right? So knowing those elements of your business and your lead generation sources. We also talk about VCP, visibility, credibility, profitability. Okay, so VCP. So you have to show up. That's the first step, right? You have to be visible. Now, I'm going to use an example here, and hopefully this, this will sit with you. A lot of times people will say, oh, well, my everybody knows what I do. Like I post it everywhere, right? I have it on social media. I wear a shirt. I go out everywhere. I talk about what I do. Great. Let me ask you a question. Do you by any chance have a favorite cousin? And it's okay. You don't have to put it in the chat. Um, I won't ask you to, to call them out, but I do. I have a favorite cousin, my favorite color, cousin, Jim. Um, he's been my favorite cousin forever. Um, do you have a favorite cousin? So hopefully, yes, right? When was the last time you saw that person? Now, I just saw Jim a couple months ago, or actually about a month ago. Um, but, and, and you care about him, right? Like, I absolutely adore him. When was the last time I gave him business or a referral for his business, right? Same thing, do they care about you? And when was the last time they gave you a referral for your business? So it's not always just, I care about somebody, it's also teaching them. So number one, you have to be visible, right? Out of sight, out of mind, we've all heard that before. So you must be present to win. And you have to make it easy for them to help you and to look for good referrals for you. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So some things you can do for visibility, of course, you know, logo shirts and newspapers and uh, place mats and all of those kind of things, you know, have nice pens, whatever it might be. Those are great things to leave behind. Um, but I really want you to think, what are some things that you're doing to stay visible in front of your friends, in front of your family, in front of your um, current clients, past clients, right? Like, what are you doing to stay visible? Second thing is credibility. So VCP, credibility. Um, we've all heard this one before, right? Early is on time, on time is late, late is unacceptable. So paying attention to that, um, dress the part, right? So uh, dressing the part, even if you're on Zoom, keep your cameras on, be present, um, you know, yeah, sure, maybe you could have pajama bottoms on, but at least be dressed at the top, but also don't be overdressed, right? Like if you're a painter and you're coming to my house, I don't expect you to show up in a suit to give me a quote on painting my walls, right? But I also don't want you to come look at, you know, looking like a slob either, right? There's kind of that fine line. So my rule of thumb that I always coach my advisors on and coach my members on is try to be either the same or just one level above whoever it is you're talking to. So for example, when I went in and did presentations um, at my husband's school, they had a pretty relaxed dress code. I usually didn't wear my suit jacket, okay? I usually wore business attire, but just not the jacket. Um, so just sometimes we get asked those things. And then, of course, credibility all boils down to are you prepared, right? So are you prepared? Do you have your presentation together? Do you have whatever flyers you might want to leave behind? Do you have a, something for a quote, right? Those are all things to, to be key with that. And ask people for testimonials. Ask clients, existing clients, have those ready, right? Ask for reviews on Facebook and Google and all those kind of things. Um, so those are some things with credibility, right? 
With profitability, um, one of my favorite books is uh, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. So if you haven't read that, that might be a good one to start. But it's not just reading. When you read business books like this, you need to implement them too. So um, just think about some things. Profitability, we usually think of profitability only in the form of income because that's what our CPAs or our accountants you know, talk to us about. But there's other ways to be profitable, right? You can't have profits if no one knows you and if no one trusts you. If they do and you're getting referrals, you know you're in the profitability stage with somebody. In addition, there's other key skills that you can measure the activities that you're doing. So are you getting better at public speaking? Are you more confident? Um, are you seeing that your closing ratio is going up? You have to talk to less people to, to have a deal go through, right? Another one, I love this one. I was always a Cheers fan, but um, good old Norm, right? My dad's name is Norm, so I love Cheers with that too. Um, but how else do you, do you look at your investment? So one of the key things is also, you know, your clients, you start to be the guy or the gal that is so connected. So they continuously call you and be like, hey, I know you're really connected. Do you have a, a limousine driver that you would recommend? Or do you have a photographer? Or do you have a, you know, chiropractor, right? They're calling you for more than just solar, that makes it so that you're more top of mind with them as well. So thinking about what are some other ways you're gonna measure your profitability when it comes to the networking efforts you're doing, whether it's BMI or other type of events. Now, this next one, this is where you're gonna to wanna to get your pen and paper ready because you're gonna to wanna to write these down. I'm first gonna pick on my husband um, in a good way, of course. <laughs> um, yeah the importance of being specific. So let's say, you know, I, I haven't, Sweetest Day is coming up by the way. So gentlemen and ladies, uh, Sweetest Day is coming up in October. Um, let's say Jeff decided to actually participate in that event this year, which he has never. Um, but let's say he knew that I wanted new shoes and he heard me say, I need new shoes. So he decides he's gonna buy me new shoes for Sweetest Day. So he goes to Google and he types in shoes. Um, what are the chances you think he's gonna get what I want? No, right? So there's, what is that? 3.7 billion in less than a second that came up? Probably not gonna happen. Now let's say that he knew I meant I wanted new running shoes and he knows that I like the Brooks brand running shoes. So he goes to the Brooks website and he looks at their shoes. They have 45 different options um, available. Do you think he's gonna get what I want? If you're a runner, you probably know the answer. Probably not, right? So let's say he goes out in the garage, he looks through my shoe bin, he doesn't get really mad and say, I don't need any more shoes, but he notices that most of my shoes that are my running shoes happen to be the Brooks Pure Connect. And he even looks at the size, he looks at that. Now he's narrowed it down to three basic colors, right? So if Jeff went through all of that for Sweetest Day, and even if he got the wrong color, like, do you think I probably would be pretty impressed and pretty happy? Of course, right? So that's the same thing. Like, you have to almost make it so easy that they can't not help you, right? So when it comes to referrals, you need to make it really easy for your referral partners. So Jeff and I actually, we kind of joke like, He'll put stuff in Amazon, in our Amazon cart that he wants, and I put it in my cart, or we make our list, and then that way we can just buy from that. We just make it easy for each other to get what we want, right? Um, so that's what you need to do with your referral partner. So let's talk about how to be specific. So we use what's called a money funnel in BNI, and you can use this anywhere. So this will be in your BNI chapter. Once you're in a chapter, you'll want to use this with your weekly presentations. But you can also use this when you're working with it let, let's say you're talking to your cousin. They're like, hey, how can I help you? You can use this, same thing, okay? So you wanna avert, w avoid words like anybody, anyone, somebody, everybody. So, you know, anybody with a roof. Okay, no, that's not a good referral for you, right? Um, so just avoiding some of these. Full service, I also do small business. Those are all things we wanna avoid. So what we wanna start with is when we do the money funnel, we wanna start with the industry we're looking at. So again, some of the times it could be the golden geese versus the golden egg. You know, what other professionals do you want to get introduced to? Um, then, you know, what is that profession? Maybe it's a specific company. So you should really be doing some homework ahead of time. Um, and you want to get specific 
then what does that person's mean and what is their title and so forth. So if you want to screenshot this, go ahead and screenshot this. I'm going to give you an example. When I give you the example, this will make a little bit more sense. And then um, you can work on this this weekend as well. Okay. So let's say that I sell office supplies, okay? And one of my products that I offer happens to be whiteboard markers. Now, who can use whiteboard markers? Anybody with a whiteboard, right? Well, that's the real answer. But remember, we're not using the word anybody. So in this case, I'm gonna say, okay, well, schools, they use a lot of whiteboards. So the, edu the industry is education. What's the problem? Well, they go through a lot of whiteboard markers, right? Especially frequently in the elementary, you know, kids don't put the cap on, they dry out, right? Like whatever the problem is, I can add to that. What are the characteristics? Who do I want to talk to? Well, in this case, I'm going to get really specific. I'm going to say high school. Now, could I help colleges and elementary and middle school? Yeah, I'm going to say high school. I'm going to say Western high school. And I'm going to say head of social studies department. And the person's name is Jeff Campbell. So I'm going to do this research beforehand. Then if I'm delivering it, so if I'm talking to my cousin and he's like, hey, how can I help you? I'll be like, you know what, actually, I've been trying to get in touch with this gentleman, um, Jeff Campbell. He's the head of the social studies department at Western High School. Do you have, do you even, do you know him or do you have any connections at Western High School? Right? That's how that conversation is going to go. And when you're in a BNI chapter, that's how your referral requests are going to go. Okay? So good BNI members will typically have anywhere from five to 30 of these filled out. Okay, so screenshot this one as well. And you wanna have these filled out because you wanna always be ready if someone says, how can I help you? Well, actually, I've been wanting to get an introduction to this guy, Jonathan Bernuso. Do you know him, right? Like, though, that is the conversation. So, and same thing. Then you wanna say, hey, how can I help you? Now, chances are good, they're not gonna be as prepared as you are, but that's really the key. So having these done. So your homework also, besides knowing your numbers, making sure you have the goals, which you better have already done, I'm sure. Um, if you don't, those are things you gotta do, but then also work on a couple money funnels. Who do you wanna get in front of? What, what contractors do you need to meet in the area? What handymen, what, you know, I shared with Jim, the um, hairstylist, right? Like my best referral source was a hairstylist because I bought flowers that sat on her station every Monday for six months in a row. And people would sit there and be like, oh, did your husband give you those? And she'd say, no, my financial advisor. And people tell their hairstylist everything. So legit, like that is how I built a lot. Like that's how I got out of cold calling and doing all those dials <laughs> um, was through the hairstylist. So steal that idea, go buy flowers, talk to a hairstylist, help them out, right? And I'm happy to talk to any of you about those later. Um, we talked about the golden geese and the golden eggs, so making sure you have that. Let's talk about those referral partners. So if you've never filled out who are your referral partners or your um, contacts for your members, these are people that are in similar industry, but they're not your direct competitors, right? So having a list of who else do you want to meet. People are always going to be more willing to introduce you to another business professional than to someone they think you're going to sell something to. Okay. Um, and that's, I mean, that's just how it is. So knowing that's how it is, then you need to play the game that way. All right. And that's how you need to build your business. With referral partners, though, a lot of times what happens is you know, let's say Jonathan introduces me to Bobby and then Bobby and I are like, oh, great. You're, you know, I'll pass you some referrals. You'll pass me referrals. Here's, here's a stack of five of my business cards. I'll take some of yours, you know, we'll hand them out. And then what happens? Like nothing, right? Or maybe he hands it out, but he doesn't put me in control of the process. So I don't know who he handed it out to. I can't call them, right? Like the key is being in the control of the process. So we always say disappointments are directly related to the expectations that you set, right? This is the same thing with your clients. If you tell your clients, oh, we're gonna have an installer there next week on Tuesday and they no call, no show and they don't show up for six weeks later, right? Your client's disappointed. Where if you said, hey, you know, things are running behind right now, it's probably gonna be six weeks before we can get it, anything installed. And then they show up in four weeks. Now you look like the hero, right? So disappointments are directly related to expectations. 
Now I think this one's fun. Most people think this one's gross, but let's say that I go to an amazing restaurant. I see this on their menu. I order Alaskan king crab legs. This is what I think I'm gonna get. And then this is what they get me, right? Like, I don't even know who served this, but isn't this awful? Um, so I feel like this is something like a three-year-old put together. Um, how disappointed am I, right? Like pretty disappointed. So that actually happens with our referral partners too, but then we just don't say anything about it. So if this happened to you at a restaurant, you're probably gonna talk to the manager, right? We gotta do that with our referral partners too, but we gotta do it in a caring and loving way. So with your referral partners, you need to have regular reviews. Okay, this is, you know, this was not Casey's station, but, um, and those are not Barb's flowers that she delivered, but I put this in here as the reminder of that. Casey and I would meet on a regular basis, the hairstylist, because I wanted to make sure that she knew exactly what to say, how to bring me up in conversation. I also did similar things to help her. Right. So we were honest with each other. We evaluated the relationship. She knew she was going to give me a lot more referrals than I was probably going to give her. And that was okay. But then I helped her in a lot of other ways. Um, so just knowing, and then you can have multiple contact spheres and be super creative. You know, I had stuff with golf professionals. We did little golf lessons and I can talk about that at a different one too. Um, but really with your referral partners, you need to set expectations. You need to help each other and you need to communicate what is a good referral and what is, is not. Um, so tracking and evaluating the, the Goldilocks method, right? You got to be just right, not too hot, not too cold. But that also means you have to go to enough events and enough things. So like if I go to one chamber mixer, I may, I may love it. And then I might go to another one and I'm like, oh, that wasn't as good, right? Same thing. You might go to one BNI chapter and not have as great of an experience as another BNI chapter. That's okay. But you have to look and you have to reach out. And then the key is really finding mentors. The other element is being a mentor. So the best way to master something is if you teach it yourself. All right. So building that team, bringing on more people, you're going to be forced to get better at sales, better at public speaking, all of those kind of things if you help mentor other people as well. Now, I saw a few of you because my phone was going off. I know a few of you did this too again today. Um, but if you haven't already looked at BNI um, partner.com slash power, make sure you do that. Even if you don't love BNI and you don't join a BNI chapter, that's okay. Because it might not be right for you right now. But you'll probably find down the road you're going to wish you had and that you should have looked at a chapter. Um, either way, I would encourage you to go because I think can't explain a BNI chapter to you, you actually have to experience, right? Like it is an experience. And be careful. There are uh, some of our competitors out there say, oh, we're just like BNI, but they're not. Maybe they don't do the attendance and the accountability. Maybe they meet every other week. I'm telling you, BNI looked at meeting every other week. You know what they got, even though they only met half the time, they actually only passed 20% of the referrals because it wasn't weekly. So just, you know, actually go to a BNI chapter for me. Once you get there, um, have your name badge on. Uh, Jim and I had talked about this. You always, and Jonathan, you put your name badge on your right hand side because you, you shake with your right. So then we learned the heart hug um, from, from Jim as well. So um, business cards, have those ready. If they're virtual, make a QR code, right? Have, that, have this QR code. You can make it at qrmonkey.com and have a free one, but put your contact information in there right? So you could have that on your screen, like right over here, right? Um, have an emotional message, right? Don't use giveaways that force someone to sell or to spend money with you either. That's a, another one um, that we usually try to recommend that people avoid. So how do you know if your networking efforts are working? Number one, referrals, you're getting clients, but also thinking about the skills. And you get to practice and you get a pilot test group of people that you can be working with. Now, this will happen. And I know some of you have already experienced it because I, I saw a few messages. What if you're locked out of all the local chapters? What if there's already a power consultant or another you know, solar company consultant and you're all the chapter or chapters in your area? I'd still encourage you to visit an existing one and then look at building your own. It will take you a little bit more work, but it also gives you more perks. And Jim and I had talked about this too, actually. If I had to do it over again, for me right now, like if, if I wasn't working for BNI, BNI anymore and I decided to be a power consultant, then I wouldn't go to an existing chapter. 
knowing what I know. I would start my own, but I also know how to start my own too. But the reason I would is because I could control what realtor comes into my chapter, what insurance agent comes into my chapter, what contractors, and I already have some of those networks built. So that's why I would start my own. Um, it is more work. So it is a lot easier and it's a lot of benefits by going to a chapter that's already existing or a smaller chapter that's already existing too, because then you could add some of your folks too. So you could take a chapter of 12 and help grow it to 30. That'll help you every day of the week all the time. Um, if you end up being locked out, feel free to email me. I probably won't be the person that'll help you start the chapter directly, but I will put you in contact with either the local team or um, our corporate launch team as well. So my email is michelle at bni.com. Um, if you're locked out of local chapters, just shoot me an email and I will help you. Um, reminder, networking is not about hunting. It's deer season here in Michigan, so it's not about hunting. It's still about farming and building those relationships. Um, so you'll be a better networker if you're, you always remember that. So we also say, you know, a good networker has two eyes and two ears and one mouth and uses those proportionately. Um, that's something you wanna keep in mind as well. So with that, remember, it's not net sit or net eat, it's net work. So hopefully you have a list of some things you need to do today. And with that, um, I'll turn it back over to either Bobby or Charles. Um, well, thank you very much. Brilliant as always. Thank you. Um, yes, um, so I guess we can leave this open for another moment, then we'll have to decide when to tell the recording. Charles, how much longer do we have this Zoom? Is this open or we'll kill it? The yeah, end we're time? open. And Michelle, I just sent you a, a copy of a message that was posted earlier, just so you can address this. Good question. Yep. Oh, it, um, so the key, so the question is, what if someone listened to it or um, if maybe your behavioral style is like me and you're, you're not super patient, you heard, oh, BNI and you just typed in BNI.com or you went and looked at your own, that's fine. Um, when you apply, the key is to make sure that power is in um, your business name. And if it's not and you already applied and you did, we can help change it after in your um, BNI Connect profile. But that's okay. That's my behavioral style too. So guys, gals, don't feel bad if you did that as well. <laughs> Maybe it's in the name, according to Jim, you know, pointing. <laughs> I, I want to open this up to Charles and Jim in a moment. Um, and I want to have a comeback strategy. Maybe it's next week. Maybe it's two weeks from now. We've already had this time slot built uh, into this for our market expansion. So, uh, so real quick, Charles, you want to let anything in this before we turn it over to Jim? No, just phenomenal content. We'll make sure we get this uploaded into university, as Jim mentioned on the on the training, so everyone has access to it. Really appreciate the the time you put in to help make this successful. Great Thank stuff, you. Jimbo. Yeah, I was just going to say if if you have not been successful at building a network of givers, which is the main core concept here, you know, getting your mindset around not what can I get, but how much can I give. Um, I, I believe that's step one. And I was just taken back to when Jonathan and I did our first round of fundraising. We literally made a list of people that were our relationships we built over years of people that we had added value to, to them and they'd added value to us. And you'll know in your network, who are the people that are always like, oh yeah, I know a great housekeeper. Or, yeah, I know a great aunt person, or I know this, or I know that, or I know whatever. Um, so it, become one of those people. Become somebody who's constantly looking for uh, ways to add value and who knows everybody. Um, so that's probably one of the most important things that I can share is, is this is something you can learn. Uh, wasn't like this originally. Um, you can learn this. It's really fun and you can do it across the country and across the world. So I would just say lean into it, develop the skill set, take 90 days and figure out how can I add massive value to everybody that I know. Uh, that's how we raised all the capital in the beginning was through our networks. Awesome. So Michelle, maybe a closing statement for you, then we'll kill maybe the video. So we'll have our, our contacts here and then we can do a little bit more Q&A. From a pure bottom line action step, Michelle, anybody here who does not belong to BNI, what would you like to see them do today? Um, go to the bnipartner.com slash power page if you haven't done so already and submit your information. Um, visit a chapter or two in your area. 
and then decide which one's best and, and apply. Um, and then use some of the tips. And I saw in the chat, you know, what if I've already submitted my application? I want to amend it. Just talk to the membership committee. Um, some of our best membership committees do interviews as well. Um, not all of them do, but some of them do. So you can expand more on those questions like what I shared earlier. And then if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, or there's, you know, several of you here that are members reach out to each other too. Um, and then yes, is there BNI training? Oh my goodness, yes. We have an entire university on um, training and you know just the elements like I showed you that money funnel, there's a training just on that where we can actually walk you through and say, okay, now write it down, pick four industries. What are those industries, right? Do, like we'll, we will do a ton of in-depth training. Yep. Awesome. All right, Charles, we want to kill the video and thank yes, everybody. Sir. We'll come right back and we'll and we'll leave it open for a few more questions.